Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask, me, they ask of me righteous in judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do you fa we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like the spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of tr streets to live in. The word of the God, Lord. Thanks.
from the Second Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Verses 1, 2, and 3. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So, whatever you, so whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues, and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, I have received their, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. 
Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dis- dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so that they may show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So we come here tonight with three readings which are contextualized by their presence in the beginning of the season of Lent. I'm not quite certain that I, whenever I read these, that I always want to have sort of that Lenten context. Lent, in case you knew, was the church trying to solve a problem. And here's the problem. Our baptism, like we saw on Sunday with our good friend Aaron, is for the remission of our sins. Um, Little Aaron probably hasn't had many sins yet, so what are we doing with all of that? Because even if Aaron were 17 or 18 or 25 or 35 or, you know, 57 or... 66, that's a good number. The chances are he would sin. Now, let me say something that I'd like you to know about sin. Because here we were at the beginning in our, um, uh, uh, of our collect, and as we were talking about lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, I want you to know that, yeah, at some level we are wretched, but at another level I don't want to think of us in our wretchedness. I think we are creatures who are loved and cared for by God. And I think what we do with sin is we miss the mark of what God intends for us. By the way, if you were to look at the word used in Greek and understand what it means, it says missing the mark. And I think that's what the church has always been trying to get at, but sometimes we've framed it in wording that debases us so much that we can't feel like children of God. And I think that's, that's not always been the church at its best. So there we have little Aaron, who has probably no wretchedness, wretchedness yet, and who's got a cute smile, and we know that as he grows up, uh, he's, he's doing it a little now, he will assert his own self-identity. And sometimes in ways that will not always be consistent with the ways of God. And so the church, trying to figure out what do you do when we want everybody to be baptized and in the church and taking communion and knowing the presence of God, what do we do if somebody messes up? Because, in all seriousness, at the very early part of the church, church life, even before there was a church, people thought if you got that baptism, it was a once and for all thing. We still believe it's a once and for all thing. But then they worried about, well, what if somebody messed up? And people could be, you know, sort of kicked out of the communities that they worshipped in 
if that happened. And when you've got a whole society built up around the church, you need some way for reconciliation to happen, for people to admit, I missed the mark. And that's where Lent came in. It was a way for people, we'll read later, notorious sinners, um, and some not-so-notorious sinners. It'll be a way for them to admit they missed the mark, and then be readmitted into the community. Now, I love the readmission part because it deals with the aspects of our humanity that each of these readings touches on. So in the first reading, and by the way, I'm going to give you this three-point sermon, and they're all R words. The first R word is rebellion. Yeah, It's in Isaiah, it's right up front. Announce to my people their rebellion. So this is one of the things that the prophets told the people. That they had rebelled against God. They had missed the mark. And in this particular uh, prophecy by Isaiah, well, we know that the people were doing many of the right things. They certainly were doing many right things around worship. But God wanted them to do more than just write things around worship. He wanted them in a community of people, as part of a community of people, that did right things. That missed, did, instead of missing the mark, they were right on target. And these are some of the things that God says to them. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light will shine in the darkness and your gloom be like noonday. He's directing them to to hitting the mark. And what is the mark? Well, stop gossiping and judging others. Start clothing those who are naked and feeding those who are hungry and you'll begin to know what making, hitting the mark is all about. And that's Old Testament stuff. God was working with a rebellious people. And then we get to Paul. We've spent a lot of time in Paul recently, partly because of me, yes. And I do have to point out this part of Paul. This is Paul when he gets to be at his best. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Paul, through all of his stuff and all of his baggage, knew that what he was working on is a reconciliation with the people, not only his own people, the people of Israel, but with all the nations to be reconciled with the God that he had encountered, whether it was on the road to Damascus or in some spiritual sense way beyond anything we've ever known, Paul knew about that. And he was willing to endure physical strain and suffering in order to make sure people understood that. Paul's letter to the second Corinthians, the second letter to the Corinthians is an even more complicated letter than his first, and I won't try to unpack it here, but that's what's going on. There's another R word later in his letter, he says, yet always rejoicing. That's what he wants us to be, a rejoicing, joyful people, knowing that we're hitting the mark. And even when we don't hit the mark, we know that we can be reconciled through the love of God. And then finally, in Matthew, the big crescendo. And what is the result of doing the things that God has asked us to do? It's reward. Sometimes we disassociate reward with what it is, and if you go through the rest of this uh, reading from Matthew, you'll understand why. God wants our hearts oriented in such a way that the reward is a natural consequence of our behavior. And what is that behavior? Well, it's being just and righteous without looking for immediate and direct rewards from the people around us. There's a, there's a phrase now um, among us, it's called stolen honor. 
that's when we go out and claim an honor that's not really ours to claim. And that's what I think Matthew is trying to get at here when he tells this story of Jesus. He wants us to be holy in truth, not simply in our outward behavior. He wants us to align ourselves with the ways of God so naturally that we do the things that God would have us do. Yes, we would give alms, but we wouldn't make a big show of it. Yes, we would pray, but we wouldn't make a big show of it. Yes, we would bear the marks of Jesus on Ash Wednesday, but we would do so with humility. Why? Well, Christ covers us, but he's not there for us to promote ourselves with stolen honor. He's there for us to figure out how we serve. That the treasures we have are the treasures that are important to God. And that's where we finally get this. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. And whether that's money or honor or laudits or any other thing, the thing that Jesus wants us to know is that the treasures we really are longing for and, and yearning for are the treasures that God can provide. So we enter this season of Lent. I've given you my cautions about it. It's a season not to stretch and play act. It's a season to get right with God. Oh, another R word. Yes, the season of Lent is something I think I hold dear. I didn't used to. I used to avoid it with all possible earnestness. But I understand to set aside time where we strip ourselves of delusions and false honor and ways of being that aren't healthy for us, to turn ourselves into a place where, in addition to loving God, we love our neighbor, and we store up those treasures of the relationships that God gives us here on earth for an eternity of life with God. I think that's what Lent is really about. That's what the imposition of ashes is to suggest to us. This is not play acting, but a way to align ourselves with the hopes and dreams and joys of Jesus Christ. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby, the whole creation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by the reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord our Maker and Redeemer.
Those who wish to receive ashes are invited to come forward at the altar rail and receive them kneeling. I invite the congregation to kneel as they are able. Most holy and 
merciful Father. We confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to our call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord, accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for others who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. That we, by the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, our heaven, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him in which we do this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, Carol. Peace, Olivia. Rick, peace be with you. Good evening and welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. It is a delight to see those who have come to worship with us. Um, we will continue to do communion for today. We're getting closer, I think, to the altar rail, returning in fullness for everybody. We started at 8 o'clock. We'll do it at 10 soon, I promise. I just have to figure out the logistics again, and we will do that. Um, but tonight, I invite you to take communion as we have been, 
standing and coming forward as, uh, well, we have no usher. So I'm going to designate Mr. Ensminger, if you would just tap the, the pews as we go forward. The choir always knows when to go there first. Actually, Mike Ray, would you tap the pews for us? Thank you. Uh, we will have a chalice bearer here, so if, you, if you're going to drink from the cup, drink and just return to your seat the long way uh, if you're on this side. How about that? So that's what we'll do. We have gluten-free wafers for those who need gluten-free. And um, uh, we will say birthday prayers and anniversary prayers till Sunday. It just seems more appropriate on a day of celebration. Um, the choir has an anthem for us, and we will prepare the table to receive you for communion. And um, I give you, uh, I invite you to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us and offering and sacrifice to God.
The service continues with the great thanksgiving, which begins on page 361, or you can follow in your order of service. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, And said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all, bring us with our patron Francis and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
I invite the congregation to stand for the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our final hymn is number 142. Let us bless the Lord.